and I had sex, he didn't know who Sigourney Weaver was. And I was like, alien? And he said, well, yes, I guess I've seen that one. And I showed him like, alien resurrection with Winona Ryder. And it's very camp, over the top, lesbian. When Winona gets shot, Weaver puts her hand inside Winona's body and there's all of this white juice and she's like, sticks her fingers inside and says, you're a robot. And it's really great with all of this white goo and Sigourney Weaver's fingers. And at the same time, she's not normal human anymore. She's also like a mix between human and alien. And like this woman that thinks she's a woman, but is also a mix with a robot. It's really quite amazing. And then, so, I did an edit of Sigourney Weaver and Jamie Lee Curtis movies together, and it's really impossible to show it because there's lots of like copyright issues, and if you want to show it in a proper space, and, and then I like to dance with it with a massive flat screen where the hole in the body is your own body, and she's like sticking her fingers inside you. 90 Sigourney Weaver is really amazing. <laughs> she was in Cat, Copycat. You watch Copycat? It came out in the same year as Seven, and Seven was like the cool one, and it's okay, but it's <coughs> annoying, really gritty, male, the destruction of a really beautiful relationship or something, and then you're like, I don't know, it's just a bit too much. Whereas hers was really her over-the-top camp, and it's based around these female characters instead of these men characters being all like, your being in the big city is quite hard because I can't really like keep the relationship together and I'm, I'm working all the time and she's home and alone and she's pregnant and now she's getting killed by a serial killer I'm investigating. <laughs> <laughs> With the other one is more like, um, I'm a scientist. I'm researching serial killers and then suddenly these serial killers get a fetish around me like they want to kill me and I'm investigating them like fuck them and then oh sorry suddenly it was actually a close call and now I'm having a trauma and moving outside of her flat making her have all of these anxieties. And it was also around the time that I realized that anxieties I was having were things that were deeper to do with your anatomy and your brain and I was using all of that anxiety produced in these hyped up movies to project, to realize, well, it's really funny. In the opening scene, she's really confident, giving a lecture. Then there's an attempted murder, attempt a psycho killer. And she's wearing a red dress of course, and gets choked in the toilet. Um, and then Holly Hunter suddenly is the investigator of a new crime and in the near future. And so Weaver tries to help her because she's being involved somehow by all of this virtual reality thing. She's in her flat always on the computer. And it becomes all of about modern computers, but 90s modern computers with four screens, digitalized fish moving across and like, I'm. It, I'm image <laughs> and Im <laughs> like images coming out, really bad images. Let's try and locate where this video came from. And oh my gosh, a link has been broken. 
<laughs> this kind of thing is really good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a new serial killer out on the move, and is he connected somehow to that guy that tried to kill her? Because she's being involved somehow, and is he that guy in prison somehow, like puppeteering the whole thing? It's quite nice, and all the women are amazing, and the male detectives are also amazing, and all the villains over the top camp, unrealistic, MTV <coughs> villains in a sense. I really like it for that. It's quite hard when you first watch it and you're like, no, no, Seven is obviously the better movie. But I remember Sigourney, we were saying, yeah, Seven is okay, but uh, Copycat is the movie you wanna watch, you know? <laughs> really? And now I completely understand that. That is a movie and that I've watched hundreds of times. It never gets boring. It's really good. And the relationship between Holly Hunter and Sigourney Weaver is quite amazing. And the end, um, it's a repeat of the scene that opens the film, but it's the other guy trying to recreate the, so she's wearing the red dress and he's trying to choke her in the toilet and then I don't actually remember. <laughs> Of course it all ends well, she survives again, but this time she really takes control of it. While he's choking her, she's just starting laughing, saying, <laughs> it's pathetic, you shit. It's quite good, it's amazing. <laughs> she's taking control of the situation. <laughs> Let's have a little break from the book, yeah? <laughs> we'll get back to it. Oh, 
<laughs> if anybody's going to the bar, we'll light a refill of my beer. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit tight. You can, you can also, like, if you want, you can move the image around. But
Did you ever watch Death of the Maiden? Uh, Death of the Serpent. No, Death of the Maiden, sorry, it's called Death of the Maiden. <laughs> a horrible director, the, the pedophile one, what's his name? Polanski? Yeah. So, like, he did, uh, Polanski did a version of the theatre play with uh, her, I mean, Sigourney Weaver, in it. And it had also the actor who played uh, Gandhi, Ben Kingsley. He's amazing. And he plays this man in need of a car being fixed. and. She's like, that's the guy who tortured me. Now I remember. And that film with Copycat and with uh, Alien Resurrection, they're very similar in their 90s language. They even have similarities in the narratives and scenes. You can immediately cut from a scene in Copycat being anxious in the flat to a scene to death in the maiden, anxious in the flat with a knife, and it's wrong way to say that she's not an, uh, an amazing actress, no, but she doesn't make you feel her pain in a traditional way, just in a different way. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the failure in it that makes you feel her pain. I find it very interesting. There's something really real about them at the same time as being really very connected. Constructive. <laughs> Maybe we can watch them and you tell me what you think. It's because it, it was also interested in the masculine and fe female characters of Hollywood movies like Jamie Lee Curtis. They're both extremely tall and so they have problems with doing diversity in Hollywood. So when it comes to like horror action, to family, romantic comedies, they can do mothers, but not really in a way because they're not like heterosexual, normative, honey mummy as such, and very rarely do they do romantic comedies because they're basically a head higher than any of those men that they're supposed to be opposite. And it's so funny, that whole thing, the whole construction. Make me stop talking. Make me stop. That's what it says, I mean, in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so Many dogs start barking in the distance. Why are all these dogs always outside at night in Portugal? I just don't get it. They're making them live their natural life. They should not. They should sleep at night and be awake in the day, in natural times. <laughs> Impersonating dog. Okay, response to the <laughs> In Turin, no, not Turin, Napoli. In Napoli, I was really ill with fever. And I thought a walk to the big <coughs> volcano would be an amazing idea. I had already walked two and a half hours to the village of the volcano and then started walking up. Italian men were driving around in cars. I was the only one walking. And then every apartment on the road, on the way up the volcano, has crazy dogs barking and they sound really vicious. And I was sweating so much with this fever, I had to sit down. I sat on the dried out black lava and I realized I really needed a shit. So I made a shit on the lava and it was really brown compared to the lava, the black tar. And so I sat there with a cigarette and all of the burnt trees and decided, okay, I'm going to give up. I can't do the top. So I started walking back and all the dogs had broken out because they were so pissed off about this person walking up the hill and suddenly they're out on the road ready for me when I come down and they're all coming at me, going for me and I had to do this crazy Italian like I'm fucking killing you! You say where you are! And they were like, okay, it's the boss. <laughs> the problem was that some of them became so impressed with my 
authority that they became my pals walking down the mountain. And then a police car approached me and stopped me and said, so you and your dogs, what's all that about? And I said, I have nothing to do with that. And then they left, but I was sort of scary because I thought they could turn on me any moment. Like, you aren't the boss here, actually. You aren't the boss enough. You're, we're looking through the rubbish. Why aren't you looking through the rubbish? You aren't the boss, are you? I didn't get paid for that job. <laughs> um. In my house, there's a circle where they are coming from the stars to my home, down to the golden bird of them so alone. Without my precious box, have I a family I can't count? I've never seen a lot of beauty.
pressure keeps me company, keeps me from being alone, because no one comes in the morning, no one comes in the evening time. I see them wait for the phone to ring. I could be waiting my whole damn life. Think of the same old faces in these streets where no one talks to me. And the funny side of the situation is, I don't care. I'll always be there. And you're coming down from the sky, and you make yourself at home in my house. Because it's days, it's the morning, the morning, honey, the morning, for your love. I said, don't you know, you can't have both. I said, don't you know, you can't have both. I said, don't you know, you can't have both. So down You will find someone like you No one No Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 